Good evening, or late afternoon, I guess, Princess. I am back, if you can't tell, at Everglades. It has been a nice, super productive day of work uh, and errands, and now I figure it's time to treat myself because, remember, I can. So I decided to go a little bit basic this time. Uh, I am gonna try and have dinner later for Asian Pacific Heritage Month, and I didn't wanna go too overboard, but I really, really wanted a donut. So I got something pretty basic, and that's uh, just a chocolate glazed donut. They do not have any more cake donuts uh, other than the blueberry, which I had before, it was good. I wish they would try something else since I do prefer cake donuts, but I wanted to try just a, a pretty basic donut. You know, nothing too uh, fancy and proofy and see how that went. I'm expecting good things and even just sticking the fork in there, I, I can tell the texture is pretty good. All right, so time for free dinner treats. Fortunately, Everglades still has uh, trash receptacles inside because Disney just made a rather dumb decision. They are now closing the flappers on the trash bins. Yeah, that was the best part of this nonsense. Wow, was that donut good? It was exactly what I wanted and met my already high expectations. It was delicious. I am so glad. I, I got that one. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Although next time, I, I think I will have one of the more uh, fruity donuts. I think it's time for me to try the one with bacon on it or something like that. I've uh, only had the basic donuts, maybe working my way up. I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, that was great. Everglades has yet to disappoint, so I uh, do look forward to going back. I always look forward to going there because yeah, it's always been really, really good. And so far, so good for dinner. I got a table here at Morimoto Asia, specifically for, like I said, Asian Pacific Heritage Month here at Disney Springs. I could not get a reservation, so I decided to show up at the opening bell, 4.30, and I was seated immediately. I am fine eating this early. I actually kind of like that, so everything is working out quite well. So I am going to start my ordering process and uh, let's see what uh, delightful delights we have. I've never been here before, so I guess it's kind of a double uh, double header, I guess. All right, well, let's try Morimoto Asia. Real quick, I did make one little oopsie. It is Asian and Pacific Island Heritage Month here at Disney Springs. So I am starting off with a delicious cocktail from the special menu, and that would be the Japanese Old Fashioned, which is a uh, Suntory Toki whiskey over our Morimoto stamped ice. I don't see the stamped ice, but I'm, I'm sure it's there. Cheers with the uh, Japanese Old Fashioned. That is uh, very smooth, not very sweet. I like that. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. Appetizer has already arrived, and that would be the Lomi Lomi Salmon Tartar, which is Hawaiian salt cured Faroe Island salmon with tomatoes, onions, and scallops, jalapeno, chiso. Okay, the Salmon Tartar was a great dish, very well prepared. The uh, flavors were not bold or aggressive at all. It was really built around the salmon. So it's a great dish if you like salmon, right? So if you don't, well then definitely not for you. So I enjoyed it thoroughly because I do like salmon. Dinner is progressing very, very well. Uh, the cocktail's been great, the appetizers have been great, but I think next is going to be the main course. Well, yeah, of course it's gonna be the main course. There's nothing else left. There's only one appetizer on the special menu, so I do know what's coming next. Maybe I have to wait a minute or so, which is fine because I almost forgot what I wanted to talk about today and nothing very complicated. I'll explain this a little bit more, but it's an example of, um, let's just say, uh, lefties and their just dumb economics. I was listening to a radio show the other day and they were talking about energy policy. I know, super, super interesting. And how Joe Biden has basically turned back the clock on everything that President Trump did towards energy independence. And 
you know, the debate was between uh, a, a great American and, well, basically some nitwit economist. And one of the points was energy exploration is something that we have to continue to do because it guarantees, you know, our own energy security and independence. Well, the nitwit economist kept pointing out that it doesn't really matter. Why bother? Because even if they find trillions of barrels of whatever, it's not available. It's not going to affect world prices. Might as well just not explore anything because unless it's right there, it doesn't affect supply. No, that, that's not how it works. And it's a great example of how they literally cannot see beyond one step in front of them. It's actually really simple. So let me explain in a minute because I think I think my dinner's about to get here. And here it is, the Loco Moco. I hope you can hear it still sizzling. So it is definitely fresh out of the oven, off the pot or wherever it is they cook this. I've had a number of Loco Mocos in various places, mostly uh, Hawaii, but I think we had it in Japan. You'll have to ask mommy. And a dish I very much enjoy. Oh, you know what? In California also, there is a uh, Hawaiian restaurant that I, I went to, and it was uh, very, very good. Like I said, a dish I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy. It's basically hamburger over rice with egg and uh, all the other accoutrement. So I'm going to let this um, cool down a bit before I dig in. I'll probably uh, burn myself to a crisp starting now. You can see it. Oh boy, still uh, still bubbling down there, oh boy. I hear this is great, so I am looking forward to it. We interrupt the delicious Loco Moco to present this lovely beauty, which is a South Pacific breeze. It is comprised of Suntory Roku Jin with Galliano and Blue Curacao. It is almost too lovely to drink. Almost. So I am going to drink it. We further interrupt tonight's dining because uh, this little beauty is fantastic. That is an amazing beverage. I actually like this better than the old fashioned. It feels like, oh, kudos to uh, the bar because it feels like it was really crafted around the gin. I like the drink I had uh, a few weeks ago over at uh, Maria and Enzo's. It's uh, not meant to like hide the, the gin. It's meant to feature it. It's very prominent and very good. Very few cocktails are like that. Usually all the mixers and everything like that are meant to just sort of muddy the waters and I don't know, make something that's palatable. But uh, this, uh, it definitely features the, uh, the, the main ingredient and very, very good. I think you can see it in the shot, but uh, the floor and consequently the table are vibrating slightly, which I find extremely enjoyable and extremely comforting because looking out at the overall establishment with the large wide open atrium and the second level seating, the large windows looking out onto some beautiful vistas of yeah, admittedly trees, it reminds me very much of a cruise ship, something that I have missed for far, far too long, thanks to the nitwits at the CDC. But that will be coming to an end because in uh, a mere days, a week, a couple of weeks, uh, we are finally setting sail out of their reach. <laughs> there was nothing left of the Delicious, loco, moco, fantastic. It came recommended and it did meet expectations, very high expectations. So you're wondering what that meant. That's what it means. So it was, as expected, perfectly prepared. Uh, the Wagyu was good, the egg was good, the rice was good, all prepared excellently. It was so enjoyable. I had been you know, looking forward to this because I do love this dish and it's been so long since I've had it. And I'm glad they, they had it on the menu because it is kind of a, not really a street food kind of thing, but it is um, not really considered like haute cuisine. 
I guess, not something you would normally find at a place like Morimoto Asia, but this month they decided to feature it and did an amazing job of presenting it. I will say, it is different from the local mokos that you will get in like the smaller places, the roadside places, and you know, it's, it's just a difference between like, like, I guess street food versus, you know, cuisine. And you know your impression of the, the meal is going to depend on what you had first. So I get to try both sides. You know this is the the master chef version of a local moco, but I also very much enjoy you know the stuff you get at the little dive places on the side of the road. So wow, really really good. It will only be on the menu for the rest of the month, I think. So if uh, you see this, if it goes up in time, I have no idea when. Uh, definitely worth a try. I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. It was nice and heavy and savory, just dripping with all that delicious umami and oh, ooh, it was so good, so good. Yeah. All right, I am resting now before dessert because it is a very large and heavy dish and uh, then we will, we'll see what uh, that brings. This is going to be interesting because I, I read the description and well, we'll see. I'm uh, keeping an open mind. Not that it's going to be bad, but you know, personal preferences and all that. Anyway, we'll, we'll be fine. And here it is, dessert. This is the Halo Halo, or if you're the Master Chief, Halo Halo. A Filipino crushed ice dessert with uh, flavored jellies, condensed milk, yum, tropical fruits, and popping boba. The boba, maybe not a huge fan of, but... <laughs> The rest of it sounds pretty good. I have not had this before, I am pretty sure. So this will be a new experience for me. Oh, there you go, my new thing for the day. Okay, let's enjoy. The Halo Halo. I will take this one opportunity to say it was shockingly good. Not because of low expectations, but because of just completely missed expectations. It was completely different than what I expected. Uh, based on the description, I, I thought it would be some sort of weird mashup between like a frozen ambrosia and fruit, verine, I don't know. It sounded not very good because I don't like either of those things. But this uh, was completely different, completely different. Not really describable other than the description, but unless you have it, the description doesn't make any sense. So I'm not even going to try. But uh, I, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed that. So chalk one up to missed expectations being uh, the best thing that could happen. So I'm just going to sit here for a few minutes, uh, finish my drink, which is still really, really good, then uh, plot out what's next, which might not be anything. But we will finish those nitwits right now because the way it works is like I said pretty pretty simple see when other suppliers realize that there is a potentially huge supply of energy or any other commodity really that could come on the market they're going to adjust their economic models to make the production of that resource less economically viable for the people that might have access to it and the way they do this is by lowering their prices that's how it affects the global energy markets so you know if we discover a billion gallons of crude oil somewhere all of a sudden all the other suppliers countries really are going to start lowering their prices to make it more expensive relatively to recover that energy so it becomes a question well, why spend money to recover that which we know is there when we could just buy it for less from somebody else that's how it works. We discover a lot of energy somewhere. Everybody else lowers their price to make it less economically viable to actually recover and add that to the market. I don't really understand why this is so difficult for people to understand. I do understand why it's so difficult for some people to understand. They're just, they're just nitwit leftists, like I said. They can't see more than one step ahead of them, so they can't conceive that other suppliers would adjust their prices on the future availability of energy. I mean, they just can't do it, and when you try to explain it, they'll just wave it off because it's not that they don't want to understand it or they don't believe you, it's really that they can't. That's it, they just cannot understand this. So, I don't know, 
in the interview, this guy ended up sounding like the absolute fool that he is, which everybody expected. I think that's kind of why uh, he's on every now and then to just sound like an idiot. Uh, very easy for them, of course. So, well, I mean, that's just a very basic example of uh, how all these leftists have no clue about how economics work or market systems work, which is why they are always, always, without exception, wrong about everything. Unless they had as an amazing dinner at Morimoto Asia as I just did. So I am very disappointed in myself for letting it take this long to finally try this place. The reviews have always been stellar. It's just never made it to the top of my list and uh, it's probably going to have to go on the rotation now because I also hear the ribs are very, very good and I will be back to try those. We are not going to wait. I will not be disappointed in myself again for letting this go as long as I did. But that's entirely my fault. No one else to blame. But that is why I am thankful for my problems. Oh, 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 oh,